Those aren't your local woods. Uh, we're back with the latest after ITV News at 10. Coming up, Lucrezia with the ITV Evening News. But from me and the rest of the London team, have a lovely evening. Bye-bye. The government backs down over plans for a travel watch list for countries at risk of turning red. I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm so happy. Oh, it's been so long. Well, as quarantine requirements are relaxed for fully vaccinated people arriving from the US and most of Europe, the Prime Minister signals simpler travel rules. We have to have a balanced approach. And uh, what I want to see is a, something that is as simple and as user-friendly uh, for people as possible. Also tonight, the NHS COVID app will be tweaked as ministers look to reduce disruption to businesses. A community in shock in South Wales after a five-year-old boy is found dead in a river. Three people, including a teenager, are arrested and... Yes! <laughs> 49 years! An Olympic gold for Britain in team eventing for the first time in almost five decades. This is the ITV Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. There were emotional scenes today of families and friends being reunited after months of COVID-enforced separation. New rules came into force this morning, lifting quarantine for those fully vaccinated in the US and amberlist European countries. But after a, after a day of uncertainty, there's been relief within the last hour for holidaymakers and the travel industry alike. The government confirmed there are no plans, after all, to create a new amber watch category for the country's risk of turning red, as our consumer editor Chris Choi reports. Two years of separation for mother and son end with a hug. I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm so happy. Oh, it's been so long. Today's rule change made a big and often emotional difference for people coming to the UK. At Stansted, it's the first time this year arriving passengers have matched departing. What does it mean to be back together after more than a year now? It's the most important person of my life. <laughs> Throughout the COVID crisis, we've heard a lot about the risks of international travel. Today, we saw some of the joy that it can also bring as friends and families reunited. But the decision on future travel rules will be unemotional, says the Prime Minister. On travel, we've, we've had to balance it because of the anxiety that I think a lot of people have, I have, about uh, importing new variants, bringing back the disease. But we also have to recognise that people want uh, badly to go on their summer holidays. We need to get people, get, get the travel industry moving again. From today, those double vaccinated in the USA and most of the EU can come to England, Scotland and Wales without quarantine. And there are more possible changes to come. The government will this week decide if more destinations can be added to the green list that means no quarantine. But it now seems government has dropped plans for an amber watch list for places considered at higher risk of going onto the red list where quarantine and a managed hotel is required. And you know that Greece is on the amber list of countries yes. at the moment. Yes, so that means... News that idea has been scrapped will please many in the travel trade who say the rules are already confusing enough. The hopes are that more countries will go on to the green list. Um, I've seen some data uh, from countries that look as if they should be on the green list now. Because the rules and regulations are so different for different destinations, um, people are confused. What happened today shows that while travel is so difficult, it can also now feel more special than ever. What does it mean for you to be together with your mum now? Excited, happy. It means a lot to you? Yeah. She's my mummy. <laughs> Chris Choi, ITV News, Stansted Airport. Well, let's go to our political correspondent, Carl Dinnan, who is in Westminster now. Carl, it appears the travel industry and their supporters have won. That's right, the travel industry was dead against this idea because who's going to book a holiday to somewhere that might go 
onto the red list. And so they've been putting pressure throughout the day on ministers not to go ahead with this plan. And we are told that the Prime Minister is saying he wants a system that's as simple as possible means that he's just not going to go for it. Incidentally, that's despite a junior minister being sent out this morning to explain how the idea would work. So, yes, the industry and its supporters, who include the Chancellor, have won this round. And that does mean, however, that any country that is moving from the amber list to the red list could do so with little or no notice for travellers, although the government is under pressure now from the travel industry uh, that if it, to, to give people as much notice as possible if the situation does change for the worse in that regard. All right, Carl, thank you. Well, the government tonight said it's trying to reduce the disruption caused by people having to self-isolate because they've been pinged by the NHS app. The Health Secretary, Sajid Javid, said how the app works is being updated without reducing its sensitivity. Our health editor, Emily Morgan, is here to explain to Emily what exactly is being done and will it work? Well, the government has been looking at lots of different ways to try and change this NHS COVID app to ensure that fewer people uh, or fewer contacts who've been in contact with a positive case have to quarantine and they have come up with a solution. So any contact of an asymptomatic person will only have to isolate if they've been in the presence of that person for the previous two day days as opposed to the previous five days, which is how, how the app works currently. Now, the government hopes that by notifying fewer contacts, it will help businesses and, and industry kind of, you know, get back up and running much quicker. This does only apply to asymptomatic people, though. Anyone who is symptomatic is much more likely to pass the virus on, so nothing changes for their contacts. But given that we are all now much more asymptomatic because of the vaccine, public health officials are hoping that this will reduce significantly the number of pings. There were up to nearly 700,000 a couple of weeks ago. They don't know how many people it will affect. We'll have to wait for the data next week for that. All right, Emily, thank you. A community in South Wales is in shock tonight over the death of a five-year-old boy whose body was found in a river. Two adults and a teenager are being questioned on suspicion of murdering the boy, named by police as Logan Mwangi. He's been described as kind, funny, polite, handsome and clever. From Bridgend, Geraint Vincent reports. Logan Mwangi was five years old. He was known throughout his neighbourhood as a happy, friendly little boy. He was found dead this weekend in a river a few yards from where he lived. This morning, the investigation into his death continued. Police divers were moving slowly through the water, scanning the riverbed. On the bank, the shock and sympathy felt by this community read in the messages left in memory of a life taken when it had barely begun. He always passed the house and smiled and waved and said hi. He was such a lovely, caring boy. It breaks my heart to think that he was there and just laying there. It's just, it just makes me want to hold my children so tight. Police are still questioning a 39-year-old man, a 30-year-old woman and a 13-year-old boy in connection with Logan's death. They're also appealing for any witnesses who might have been near the River Ogmore in the village of Sarn near Bridgend at a quarter to six last Saturday morning. The teddy bear tributes mark the edge of a crime scene where detectives are still looking for evidence in what they describe as an extensive and sensitive investigation. The police have also asked locals not to speculate on social media about what might have happened to Logan. They're keeping an open mind, they say, and working hard to establish the full circumstances of his death. Geraint Vincent, ITV News, South Wales. An inquest has begun into a convicted terrorist shot dead by police as he went on the rampage with a knife days after being released from jail. The court heard that Sudesh Aman was under surveillance because he had retained his extremist views while in prison. He wounded two people after stealing a kitchen knife from a South London shop. It's been another good day in Tokyo with Britain's equestrian eventing team winning its first Olympic gold for 49 years. There was also silver in the individual eventing and a first ever Olympic medal in the women's weightlifting. Well, today's achievement, achievements bring Team GB's tally to 11 golds and 35 medals in all. From Tokyo, our sports editor Steve Scott reports. Yes! yes. 
Beating long-standing records is becoming a Team GB theme. Today, the three-strong eventing team leapt to Britain's first Olympic title for 49 years. You know, we're, we're so lucky to have these horses. They're, they're horses of a lifetime. To, to have three of them on the same team, that's why we're sat here with a gold medal. The individual show jumping event followed immediately. And, clear. and one of Britain's gold medalists, Tom McEwen, added a silver to his Tokyo collection. No, it's gone out. In an event that attracted increased attention due to transgender Olympian Laurel Hubbard, Britain's Emily Campbell powered her way to silver and to Emily Team GB's first ever women's weightlifting yes, medal. Laura Kenny's ambition to become Britain's most decorated female athlete got off to a good start today with the Women's Pursuit Quartet making it through to the next round. The men progressed too as both GB cycling teams full of medals in London and Rio hope to make their mark in Tokyo too. With cycling, boxing and sailing, I think the last week just with those three sports alone will be, will be exciting to see and monitor and you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to be moving up the medal table. Van is just going back. Laura Muir eased through to the semi-finals of the 1500 metres today, a disappointing seventh in Rio. Muir said afterwards she's in the best condition she possibly can be. While her progress was routine, world champion Sifan Hassan's was anything but. Falling with 400 metres to go, not only did she catch the leading pack, a little bit tougher than it was supposed to be. She went on to win. The biggest concern for Team GB currently is the underperforming athletics team. The hope is some success in tomorrow's women's 800 metres final will kickstart momentum. Elsewhere tomorrow, all eyes will switch to the gymnastics venue where Simone Biles competes on the beam. After withdrawing from everything else, citing mental health issues last week, her return to action will no doubt win her many more friends than she already has. Steve Scott, ITV News, Tokyo. Still to come on the ITV Evening News. Tourists flee as record temperatures fuel fires across southern Europe. And will Team GB's equestrian success lead to a new generation of stars? Those stories and more after the break. Welcome back. As Britain's 20-year military mission in Afghanistan comes to an end, the harsh reality is that the Taliban is already trying to seize back control. Many of the places which 457 British servicemen and women lost their lives defending are under attack from its forces. For the latest in our series, Afghanistan, photo from the front line. Paul Davis spoke to a bereaved mother of one serviceman. Luke McCulloch was killed just two weeks before this photograph of C Company 3 Para was taken. Easy now, easy now, easy now. <laughs> Elaine McCulloch Brand shares her life and her home on, with her horses on, and her dogs. Come on. She is always busy. Rory. She says it helps. Sara, sit. For there is still a void in this Zara, crowded life. Sit. Her son Luke, sit. who is Stay. missed every day. He was like my best friend. Always had a smile on his face. I don't think you'd see any photographs really without him smiling. Luke joined the army at 16, serving with the Royal Irish Regiment. He was killed in Afghanistan in 2006. He was attached to the 3rd Battalion Parachute Regiment. He'd been to Afghanistan and Iraq before, but his mother sensed this Afghan tour would end badly. When we were saying goodbye, at uh, Bryce Norton when he was um, going on to the flight there. I held on to him and I, I did say to him, I don't think I'm going to see you again. And he said, stop worrying, Mom, I'm invincible. And it was just a horrible gut feeling that I was not going to see him again. Those fears were realised when Luke, at the centre of a group of comrades here, was fatally injured in a mortar attack on the British outpost at Sangin. Elaine recalls the worst of days, hearing the news from her husband at an airport as she returned from a trip. 
he wanted me to get away from all the people before he told me. And we sat in the car and I turned around to him and I said, what is going on? What's wrong with you? And he told me. And it was like somebody else, I heard somebody else screaming. I didn't realize it was me. I thought it was somebody else doing it. And the most horrible feeling ever. It's the feeling of, oh my God, you know, you just want to get there, you just want to grab him. <laughs> Sorry. Elaine's grief would turn to anger when she became involved in criticising the Ministry of Defence for deficiencies in the equipment and protection provided for combat troops. It meant Luke's inquest was doubly painful. They treat you as if you're the enemy. If you're a nice, quiet parent and accept everything they're saying, oh, you're fine. Dare question them. What did it do to you and your family going through that? It's changed me completely. I hate to say it, but I've become like a little bit of a hermit. I find it difficult to leave the house. Um, I prefer to be around my animals than people. But she does take comfort from the stories Luke's comrades still tell about him. One of the guys told me about the story about him coming, they were coming back into the camp and they had all this water left over and Luke told them to stop because there were children, Afghan children on the side of the road and he said stop and they offloaded the water and some of the soldiers were cross with him. And he said, they need it more than we do. He was a good lad. And he was kind, very kind. But now I miss him. Very much. Well, Dave is with that report. The Prime Minister has told Iran it must face up to consequences of its actions after an attack on an oil tanker in which a Briton was killed last week. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said it is highly likely that Iran was behind the drone strike on the MV Mercer Street off the coast of Oman. And a Belarusian athlete who refused to be taken home from the Olympics has been granted a humanitarian visa by Poland. Sprinter Kristina Tsivmanouskaya was seen entering the Polish embassy in Tokyo. Thousands of people have had to flee homes and holiday resorts as huge wildfires continue to rage through forests along the Turkish coast. Residents and tourists even took to the sea in a flotilla of small boats to try to escape the flames and thick smoke. Sangeeta Lal has the latest. In the intense Mediterranean sun, a heat wave fed by strong winds has turned the forest into a furnace. Yeah. As people call for their pets... Yeah. Others flee from this usually peaceful holiday resort. For five days now, the skies in Mugla have been filled with flames. The local mayor tries to reassure residents, but as the blaze spreads, this woman feels like it will never end. It's obviously burning, she says. <laughs> There's no plane, there's no helicopter, there's no roads. How is this going to be extinguished? A question being asked in Italy too, as flames destroy the coastline in Pescara. Emergency teams try to control the blaze. And in Greece, hundreds have been evacuated as fires spread through roads. In Antalya, though, the fires are now under control. Little consolation for the families who've lost their homes and their crops. I've seen many things in my life, this man says, but never a natural disaster like this one. The flames are out here, but there is little relief for these families who now face having to rebuild their lives. Sangi Salal, ITV News. The hit ITV show, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, is to be filmed in Wales for a second year running because of coronavirus. Ah! Spiders! Ah! Ah! The popular reality show, normally filmed in the Australian jungle, 
will again go to a castle near Abigilla in North Wales. And finally, the horse rider Charlotte Dujardin, Britain's most decorated ever female Olympian, is back home now, saying she still can't quite believe what she achieved in Tokyo. But it's hoped her success in the dressage, coupled with Britain's eventing medals today, will help inspire others to take up equestrian sport. Hannah Miller reports. From golds in London to gold and silver in Rio, her two bronze medals in Tokyo make Charlotte Dujardin the most decorated British female Olympian of all time, a place in history to which others can only aspire. I feel so humbled to be able to be that person that they look up to, you know, as well as, you know, all the other riders. Um, yeah, I, I can't quite, quite believe it, to be honest. At this riding school, they watched on nervously as the equestrian team rode to success for the first time in nearly 50 years. And could success in Tokyo inspire a new generation of horse riders back home? Here at team gold medalist Oliver Townend's former club, they're getting the practice in early. You just want you just want to look up and just hope that someday you can achieve something as great as that. But yeah, why is it inspiring? Um, because I like how they're trying and not giving up. It's just sent as a picture with the medal. <laughs> no one knows how much hard work it takes more than Oliver's parents. How are you feeling? Oh, very excited. Over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely thrilled to bits. What's it like watching them? Nerve wracking. You're there riding. Every, every fence, legs going. <laughs> and as these young riders look to learn from today's success, seeing some homegrown golden talent makes them feel they could be the next Olympians in waiting. Hannah Miller, ITV News, Huddersfield. And that is all for now, Charlene. We'll be here with news at 10, but from me and all the evening news team, bye-bye.